In this episode, we are not looking at a story from an inmate, but rather a how-to guide. A how-to of the most disturbing nature, written by serial killer Gerard Schaefer whilst in prison. He tells us how to commit the perfect crime, meaning how to get away with murder. If you wish to know more about the crimes and see correspondence from Gerard Schaefer, then check out my other video on him. Links will be in the description. Before I get to the actual how-to guide, I want to talk about the document itself. It was sent to me by a couple who watch the show. Callie and Joe. Thank you both. And this was a document handed to Joe by a teacher at his school, who was seriously into his true crime by the looks of it. The document is comprised of the how-to guide written by Schaefer himself, a breakdown of serial killer characteristics, a psychological report on Gerard Schaefer written for a judge at a trial, notes on the crimes of Schaefer, and a write-up about the life and crimes of Charles Manson. It's truly a fascinating document and I would have loved to have been in this class. I just want to read you a small segment from the psych report. Psychosexual development began with masturbation at adolescence. Since he had been in sixth grade, age 12, he would tie himself to tree, struggle to get free and get sexually excited. Later, he would do something to physically hurt himself. While he masturbated, he imagined hurting others, especially women. During these times, he would wear women's underwear. From age 14 to 17, he had steady intercourse with a steady girl, but she left him for college. That day, he went into the woods and hurt himself in masochist way tied himself with rope and hurt himself. This is eerily similar to what he did to the young women that he murdered. But it's fascinating that he was doing this from age 12. Where did he learn this? Is it something just within him? And I would love to know what the teacher of this class thought the kids would take away from reading such material. Well, I was accused of originally, originally accused of killing 34 women, but nobody has ever managed to come up with 34 names, jurisdictions, or anything else. It's a false accusation. And what is your conviction? I was convicted of killing two in Fort Pierce. I was never shown to be at the crime scene. There was never any link between me and the people that were killed, except the testimony of the mother of one of them. Before we get to the document, if you could please take a second to hit the like button and subscribe if you are new, as this really helps the channel grow and get more eyes on the videos. Thank you. The perfect crime. In order to remain unapprehended, the perpetrator of an execution-style murder, such as I have planned, one must take precautions. One must think out well in advance a crime of this nature in order for it to work. We will need an isolated area, accessible by car and a short hike, away from any police patrols and parking lovers. The execution site must be carefully arranged for a speedy execution once the victim has arrived. Ideally, would be two sawhorses, 
with a two by four between them. A noose attached to an overhanging limb of a tree and another rope to pull away the two by four, preferably by car. A grave must be prepared in advance, away from the place of execution. Who's he writing this for? Is it for the school kids? Is it correspondence with the teacher? Or was he just writing this for himself to relive the crimes? The victim could be anyone of the many women who flocked to Miami and Fort Lauderdale during the winter months. Even two victims would not be difficult to dispose of since women are less wary when traveling in pairs. In any case, it may be more preferable to bind and gag the victims before transporting them to the place of execution. Then again, depending on what torture is planned for them, other items might be useful. Bars of soap and water. These are useful if you want to wash a woman before her execution. Induce her to urinate and then wash her. Soap provides an excellent lubricant for anal intercourse. Beer is useful to induce urination and make the victim more cooperative. Soap can also be forced into the victim to induce defecation if the victim has no particular desire to relieve her bowels. When thinking of items to bring to a murder scene, I wouldn't have thought a bar of soap would have come so high on the list. I also would have never have guessed how degrading a bar of soap could be if used in a certain way. Horrendous. Possibly she may want to defecate since people generally have a desire to do this when they are scared. A douchebag may be helpful in degrading her fervor and is also useful for a soap spud enema, which would be a great indignity. Especially if one's victim was made to urinate or defecate on the other. This would be a gross indignity. Nylon stockings are useful to tie the hands and feet of the victim. The victim should be made to strip, at least to her underwear. If stripped completely nude, an attempt can be made to excite her sexually. This effect would be especially interesting if the victim had her neck in the noose and hands tied behind her back. A white pillowcase should be placed over her head and her mouth gagged. The panties should be pulled down enough to expose the genitals and clitoral stimulation applied. During the height of her excitement, the support would be pulled away and she would dangle by her neck. She may be revived before death if desirable and subjected to further indecencies. This is a real depraved mind. He's suspected of having up to 28 victims, those poor young women who had to endure this torment. It particularly disturbs me when he said that the victims could be revived for further indecencies if desired. Such disregard for human life. So sad. After death has occurred, the corpse should be violated if not violated already. The body then should be possibly mutilated and carried to the grave and buried. All identity papers should be destroyed and the place of execution dismantled. It's just harrowing to think that's what some humans get pleasure from. It's truly shocking to think this was shown in a classroom. That's all we got time for on this episode. 
until next time, stay sane.